There's been a few things in blading recently that have annoyed me, but first you've got to check out this claymation made by Shaoshin. It's absolutely amazing. Someone had way too much time on their hand, but it's, it's really good, dude. There's like popcorn. It's like got all the key things. The sound is really good too. You got to check it out. I'll link it in the description. But first we need to talk about blading cup. So this blading cup was the first one to include quad skating officially. Uh, and because this is kind of old news, I'm just going to skim over it. So Montre got sick of absolutely dominating the inline cup and entered the quad cup for this part and dominated that as well. But he ended up coming away with second place and then was told by the judges that the only reason he got second place was because they can't have a inline skater getting first place. Now this caused a lot of outrage. Montre was pissed. He threw out his award. A lot of shit was said. All it seemed to cause was a bunch of dumbass rollerbladers to come out of the works and talk shit about quad skating. And I absolutely hate to see it. This is some like dumb, like elitist bullshit that is absolutely disgusting. The worst part of it all is uh, the judge who made this decision. They don't represent quad skating. Quad skating is a very inclusive sport. It goes against everything they stand for to exclude someone because they're an inline skater. There's a huge argument. The only thing I ever saw from quad skaters was saying they don't agree with this core. But anyway, that's enough of that stupid bullshit. There were some good things that happened from this. I will link in the description to all the results. There were some really good breakaway wins, but the winner of the street event was our stream favorite, Michael Witzerman, which is absolutely dope. And uh, just as a quick segue, uh, if you want to help me out, I am actually fundraising to get to the next spring blading cup. And we're almost there thanks to Tice today. He's in the chat today. I'll have a link in the description if you want to donate to help me get there. Uh, you should do it when I'm live on Twitch though so I can personally thank you. But yeah, thank you to everyone who's already donated. I think it's actually going to happen. I'll see you in Blading Cup 2023. But anyway, back to Michael. I think there's this clip of when Michael gets called out that he won the competition. Michael Weitzman. Look at that look of shock. It's such a good clip, man. It's just like, dude, I'm so happy for him. He's such a good skater. So style. He's so good. So technical. And this comes off the just winning the bounty competition that's been happening recently that I thought no one would ever do. The bounty was, here it is here. It's him landing it. It was a alley sole to fish a cone, flipping the cone to top sole. And Michael won that as well. Coming away with $169, which is absolutely dope. Michael seems to be on an upward trend right now and I love to see it. But this bounty competition here actually inspired me to start my own bounty competition over on my subreddit. So every fortnight right now, I'm doing a uh, trick challenge uh, where you can win some uh, prize money. This week, we're doing the Stay Fakie Challenge. Blader Jacob here is doing a perfect example of the Fakie Challenge. He's owning the bowl here. But yeah, I'd love to see your tricks. The aim of the competition is to keep it open and to the point where anyone can enter and anyone can win. Doesn't matter how long you've been blading, it won't be dominated by the pros. You have a good chance. I'd love to see your entries. And now for absolutely no reason at all, I'm gonna uh, plug this video of Tice from 2015. And once again, it just makes me super jealous that I don't get to skate in uh, wherever this is in Europe. It just looks like skate heaven. There's just spots everywhere. It's super sick. And uh, you should definitely check it out for no reason at all. Please stop cheered X5000. <laughs> oh my God, Tice. Just Another amazing person from the chat that you should check out though is Liam. I mentioned him in my uh, podcast with Jan. He's the man. He regularly comes in the chat here. Here's him landing his first Corkscrew 720. The dude is non-stop learning crazy shit. It's really good to see. We love it. Uh, keep killing it, Liam. And speaking of innovation, uh, our boys at Jump Street Podcast have started making supplements, which is like an era of blading that no, I haven't seen anyone tap into yet. And I can't believe it because it, it just makes so much sense. All of us have the worst feeling knees. Literally all of us. I'm probably like the youngest out of everyone watching right now. And my knees feel terrible. And I'll buy anything that's going to help my knees feel better when I skate. And uh, Jump Street now has you covered. You can now support the best rollerblading podcast and support your knees, as well as a bunch of other things. But speaking of the Jump Street podcast, uh, Austin Paz put out a very heated video about his favorite skate hack, where he goes on a rant about uh, laces and rollerblading. Now, as someone who sells laces and rollerblading, this was uh, a little scary to see, uh, mostly because... I do agree with the things he was saying here. So uh, his whole point was that uh, laces are a big waste of time. They don't add enough to your skate for the time it takes for you to put them on. So instead of using laces, he uses elastic laces, like the ones you use when you're a kid and you can't tie your laces, you know? And uh, he has a few very good points. Sorry, he has like a comparison in this video here where he uh, puts his skates on about five times faster than the uh, other homie with him who's having to tie the laces. And, uh, and, he says it's especially a good reason to not use them when you have a 45 degree strap. I have to argue that laces do make a difference, especially if you're a person who likes a tight fit. And for, depending on the skate you skate, 
Sometimes they make a huge difference. But he's definitely got me curious about wanting to try some elastic uh, laces the next time I get the chance. But if you are like me and do believe that laces are worth having, then I have you covered with a brand new drop from my company Laced in Z with the uh, Stealth Laced Wax Laces. Now these are strong waxed hockey laces that are made for aggressive roll blades. So they're the right length. You don't have to chop the laces. You don't have to wrap them around your cuffs. They're made to be the right size for aggressive skates. And I know that was one of the uh, peeves that uh, Austin had was that he, he hates how it looks when you wrap around the cuff. And that's one of the reasons I made these laces because I think that's stupid. You shouldn't have to cut brand new laces. Uh, anyway, these ones are black on black. They feature an almost invisible ink style print that says lace wax laces. That's going to secretly help you lace every trick when you have these on. Trust me, but don't look into it as well and don't research it. But if you want to support me, these are actually available worldwide at skate shops. You can get them now at Loco Skate Shop, Oak City Skate Shop, uh, this is Soul Skate Shop, Shred City Skate Shop, and uh, Rampant Skate Shop, as well as directly from me. I ship worldwide as well if you want to support me. That'd be super dope of you. But speaking of Loco Skate Shop, uh, recently on Instagram, Jake showed off their brand new uh, warehouse they're moving into, and it is absolutely massive, man. And I'm so hyped for this. This is another perfect example of uh, how well blading is doing right now. This place is so huge. He's gonna fill it with the uh, massive racks to hold skates, which I, I just, I just warms my heart to hear that. Out in the car park area, they have a lot of space where he wants to build like stuff to skate, and they're gonna have obviously the the store that you can actually go visit down the front. They got a lot of building to do, but I cannot wait to see the finished product. Local is fucking sick, and I love to see them doing well. And if uh, you wanted to get skates, you should definitely check them out. They ship worldwide, and they're an excellent shop, one of my favorites for sure. And speaking of massive things happening. Uh, my boy Kip Nugget or Harold from the chat made his first ever edit and it's absolutely sick. I've seen this dude go from a dude who steps into Marquios to a guy hitting handrails, jumping two foot, massive improvements. And he's funny, released his first edit out on Instagram. You should definitely check it out. But I definitely have one critique and that is he used way too much slow-mo when he's hitting this handrail here. I'll skip to it. So we're just gonna just, just be prepared for that. Too much slow-mo, man. Way too much slow-mo. But uh, Really cool edit, other than that, okay? <laughs> that seems a bit mean, but he's the man. Harold's the man, he knows it. Harold's the man, he keeps me on track. He's good. Another really good young skater we should definitely check out, though, is Michael P. <laughs> I'm just going to say P. I'm not going to murder his last name, okay? We don't need to give the haters any ammo. But he's another insanely good young skater. Look at him just destroy this park. Handrail after handrail, switch up after switch up. Another dude you should definitely go follow on Instagram. Both of them will be linked in the description. Go check out the full things yourself and support the next generation of bladers. We need them. Look, he just did a flip like it was nothing. It was fucking sick. Uh, next thing that got me excited was this picture hidden in a big gallery of pictures by John Julio. And it happens to feature a little leather cutout that is known to come with uh, Clark's shoes. So this is another way of confirming the Them X Clark collab. Now, I'm still praying that this is a skinned Them skate. Even if it's a 908, I'll be happy. I'll be more happy than that than to have a shoe but I don't know, both ways, I'm super excited. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, speaking of them skates, so they've had a bunch of collabs. So many collabs, a lot happened in the last month of me uh, slacking here. Uh, the next one, Drug Receipts and uh, Blading Cup and them. They got together and uh, they've made this exclusive skate. Now this is an extremely rare skate. Now this is the other thing that kind of annoyed me in Blading. There's a couple of tangents here I wanna go on. The only way you can get these skates if they did catch your eye is they are, you have to own one of the Geography NFTs to even be able to buy them. First off, the, the skate design here, this is a dark gray skate with gold highlights. It looks really nice, I'll say, but for a super exclusive skate, I feel like they could have done a lot more. I feel like for like an NFT only skate, they should have gone crazy. I know it's hard to do on a super rare collector's like small run of skates, but I would have loved to see like some like handmade art done on it or some like super custom parts not something you can kind of make yourself like i'm looking at these skates you could go buy a black 909 go buy if you're at the blading cup you could have got those laces you could literally screen cap this and steal that <laughs> remake that uh the the artwork on the crate original frame and there you have that skate so they should have done something that you couldn't do that in my opinion but uh, just to do another tangent from the nft thing i remember i think i covered it on blader news when brooke howard smith posted up on rollerblading, rollerblading, saying he's working on something huge with Arlo and how excited I was to hear about what that was and uh, everyone else was as well. I wasn't around for those days of blading, obviously. I'm a new school blader, but uh, Brooke Howard, he's kind of like a, a household name in New Zealand, which is funny. He was, uh, he was on TV. He's like a radio host. 
And uh, he's a cool dude. He's known for the show uh, Target. Let me pull up for you if I can. So here's Brooke on uh, Target, which is what I think a lot of, at least that's what I know him for, before rollerblading. So it was really cool to find that out. Maybe like Brooke Moore, especially when I learned he invented the Royale and stuff. Good dude. But anyway, I was super disappointed, just like uh, a lot of other people. A lot of people even thought they were bringing Senate back, but to hear it was an NFT was so disappointing. Now to be very clear here, the, the way that Brooke and Arlo and them have done these NFTs is the right way to do it. It's not like... It's not a scam. It's like it's they've done they've done it right. They're not. It's not an absolute cash grab. But to me, all I see it is as a cash grab. The only reason Brookers came back to blading here. This is what it looks like to me anyway. Is to grab some money from blading and run. There's nothing else, which is fine for a religion. But yeah, anyway, this whole thing it just was disappointing to me. That's me personally, anyway. And I also do want to give some big props to him because this kind of cancels out everything I just said. But I did notice. I don't have any proof of this anymore. I tried to find it, but I can't. But I saw him commenting on the old Jeff Howard raises thing that happened recently, uh, calling out the fact that skate companies kind of pretend that they're super poor and they can't afford to look after their riders. And I thought that was really cool to see him do. But anyway, uh, moving on to uh, a bit more exciting collab that them did. They also did a collab with Brain Dead and Wizard again with this skate here. Apologies for the hammering sounds you're hearing, but uh, this collab is absolutely sick. It's another one of those like mixed colors look. Uh, it's very similar looking to the last Brain Dead collab and I like it. The colors, the brown and the cream, it looks very good. This comes in three ways. There's an aggressive setup, a uh, the new 90 mil setup, which I think is so smart. It detaches by the sole plate, so quick switching. But the main piece, the head turner, is this wizard frame collab, which is so freaking sick. Look at these frames, man. This, they're like uh, engraved with like a brick design, and it looks so good. You should see the uh, window display. Do I have it? Now, if I was walking down the street and I saw this in the shop, I am 100% going in. I am a roll later, though. Now, this edit for this collab is so good. Look how it starts. It's so You see this, uh, the frames getting engraved. It's so like mechanical and like robotic. Look how fucking beautiful that shit is. This whole edit, it's got so much like passion and power and like energy in it. It's so sick. And uh, yeah, I, I'm sure it's going to bring a lot more people into wizard skating and just into blading in general. The thing I really love about wizard skating is I feel like it's super unique to like rollerblading. I know it's kind of like ice skating and skiing as well, but it, like it just feels so rollerblading, the like moves and stuff you do. But speaking of frames, another absolutely beautiful shiny metal frame uh, got released from Endless Blading. They almost look invisible. They're so beautiful. They're limited edition. And uh, I couldn't recommend them more. Like, look at that. They're so sick. Oh, you can't really see it. Let me uh, enhance. Enhance. Look how shiny and beautiful those are. You should definitely check them out. Uh, but not done talking about frames yet. If we move back into the aggressive scene, 5050 you have a brand new prime frame wall. It's a pro frame for Sasha Lopez. It's in this beautiful uh, light blue color with the, with the gold like sun highlight for the logo. It looks so good, man. You know these are going to look so good with Yondriel's wheels, the orange ones. Definitely check that shit out. It's going to be so sick, you know, and uh, we'd love to see it. We're not done talking about 5050 though because they did just release a new edit uh, called uh, Research Triangle. And once again, I just want to mention how absolutely insane and cool the 5050 team is. This video really captures that well. John Fromm, there's Stefan Brando, there's Chris Farmer, there's Jan Drial. It's just like such a cool team vibe. This edit features some really good skating and a lot of like good crew energy. And uh, it's one of those like almost perfect full rounded edits. It even features a bet. Hawk Trackler did the worst bet of his life. He bet that Chris Farmer wouldn't hit this death rail, that the house death drop rail. It's Chris Farmer. That's like literally all he does. That's the worst bet you could ever make. But I am happy that Chris Farmer's getting paid <laughs> to destroy a fucking rail. It's good to see. Because obviously he hit that shit first try like it was nothing. Like obviously, right? He's Chris Farmer. So, so fucking sick. Anyway, uh, definitely check that one out. And then I have some bad news for our uh, Argentinian rollerbladers out there that wanted to get their hands on some Mesma because uh, Billy O'Neill spent $3,000 shipping 10 pairs there and the government just decided to keep them. They're just gone. Every government that does that, you suck, okay? You, you could at least return them. That's so shitty. Where do they go? They just throw them out? What a fucking waste. But anyway, and so much better news though. There's a brand new Bladies Wheel. It's a collab with Deal With It. Urethane that is uh, poured in the US, I think. Let's make that up. Yeah, it is. Premium pour. I'm sure it'll, it'll treat you good and it'll look really good on those uh, Blady Aeons or any setup. Now to quickly uh, update some stories from uh, last week that I missed a couple important points of. Uh, 
The first one being, Razus has gone from a $3 royalty to a $30 royalty, which is a massive step in the right direction. We'd love to see it. It isn't a new step. They already had that plan before the big controversy last week. If you don't know what that is, definitely check the last Blade of News. I'll have it linked in the corner or something. And actually, while we're speaking about Razus, there's a very exciting uh, post up on Jeffrey's Instagram recently showing that he's testing something new. Now, this could possibly be a brand new shower. I know Razus somehow does release a lot of good showers, which is why... It is, they are a hard company to hate, and that's why they get away with a lot. Uh, hopefully, this is a new shower. I'd love to see something good. I mean, they did pretty recently come out with a shift, so it would be very impressive for them to make something new. So we're probably getting our hopes out about nothing, but I'm still excited to see what this is. Keep your eye out for leaks, and uh, send them to my Discord, please, because I want to see it first. Don't let Tom beat me, and don't let Biz come back with a comeback with a super deep cup, because I know that's something he'd do. He'd have that scoop. But anyway, they still have a few things they need to sort out, that's for sure. Another quick update I wanted to update you guys on was, uh, I somehow forgot to mention that uh, Bill Stoppard's Pro Signature Skate got renewed. One of the uh, YouTube bladers, one of my favorites, the best urban skate I've ever seen. He has a uh, Pro Skate. With Adapt, if you want the complete setup, uh, you have to get it from Pro Skater's Place, which is uh, his sponsor. And uh, this is a sick looking skate, super aggressive, very bill stopped. And uh, here's the point of the show where I want to give a massive thank you to my uh, Blader News correspondents. That is Anne, Christian, James, Palmer, Matt, Sonic Sports, Shane, Tice, and Xander, as well as the rest of my patrons and members. I couldn't do this without them. They're the man. Or every single one of them are the man or woman. They're the best. And... Uh, we're not done there you go there. I've got an insane clip that you're going to have to watch a million times over to understand. And that's from my man, Jimmy. He's been posting clips like this back to back over and over again. Uh, and if you can make sense of it, I'll be very impressed. Uh, name this trick. Just name this trick. I know Tom Moyes had a good name for it. It was like a Citric. I already forgot it. It, it just... I've looked at this like 20 times. It doesn't make any sense. And actually, crazy enough, Jimmy, as I'm talking, just dropped a new VOD that's out right now. His first one for Faction. And uh, if those clips I just showed you weren't enough, this is a little teaser you're going to get right now. The only teaser you're going to get, just he's earned your money. Go buy it. I can guarantee it's worth it. Support a dope skater that's just doing tricks that don't make any sense. You know, Your mind's going to be blown watching it. Just go, go watch it, okay? That's my plug. Go check it out. It's linked in the description along with everything else I talked about today, okay? And I also want to give a massive thank you to everyone here in chat right now, making this fun. They got the benefit of having to be able to force something into Blade News just for being here today. So if that sounds like something you would like to take advantage of, Follow me on Twitch, I go live once a week and I'd love to see you there. And if you're thinking about getting raises, you should definitely watch my last episode of Blade News here before doing it. There's some stuff you should know about them before you buy them. But you, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy them, but you should know this stuff, okay? <laughs>